tune it on uh, non peer arrays. Uh, I want to go and talk about actually accessing the information in your arrays, so indexing the arrays. So indexing is this process of getting uh, one or a subset of the values that are stored in a collection. So for simple Python sequences like lists, then you can just index with a single integer. And that indexing is done by having in, putting using the square brackets. So if you have a list and you do my list square brackets three, then you're asking it to index that list um, with three. And then the slight complication is that uh, Python always starts counting its indexes at zero. So in fact, three gives you the fourth element in the list and not the third element in the list. So indexing of arrays is similar. You can do it with integers. And so to get the, the fourth element of an, of an array, you do my array square brackets three. And again, it's the same. It starts counting at zero. So the fourth element you index with a number three. But NumPy can do a whole lot of more things which are quite clever. OK, so uh, let's go and create a nice, simple one dimensional array like this, um, just storing the numbers zero to nine. Um, and if we try indexing that 1D array, um, as I said, it works a bit like a list. You just give it a single integer element to index by. And it comes back and tells you that the third element of our list, starting uh, counting at zero, is the number 2.0. And that's because the elements we stored were 0 0.0, 1.0, and then 2.0. Um, no, if you try indexing the um, array with a floating point number, even if that floating point number is storing a whole, is actually a whole number, uh, modern versions of NumPy will go and throw an error at you. They'll complain that you can't index with a floating point number, um, even if that floating point number is in fact a whole number in itself. Um, you can return multiple elements all in one go. If you index um, not just with a single integer, but with a list of integers, or in fact, more generally, any sequence of integers except for tuples. Um, and so in this case, I'm going to feed it the list um, two, six, and three. And so it returns me the third, seventh, and fourth elements uh, that I've stored in my uh, array, which is the numbers 2.0, 6.0, and 3.0. And note that it, it what it returns is itself a little array. It's an array of three elements, and that um, those three elements are returned in the order in which I asked for them, not the order in which they're stored in memory, because in memory they would have been stored as two, three, and six, but I asked for them as two, six, and three. Um, you can also uh, use a slice um, to get a specific range of, of the indices. So the general format of a slice is you have a start value, a colon, stop value, colon, and a step value. And in fact, all the values there are optional. So if you don't provide a start value, then it just assumes you mean zero. If you don't provide a stop value, then it assumes you mean the end of the array, whatever that is going to be. Um, and if you do provide a number, then you need to remember that like range, the slices exclude that final end value. So it's start value up and to, but not including the stop value. Um, so if you did want to manually specify the full range of it, you'd have to go to one plus the size of the, um, of the element of the, of, the, of the list. And then if you miss out the second colon and the step value, then it just assumes you meant colon one, in other words, to get every element. If you put negative values for the start and the stop, then you're counting from the end of the list towards the, the end of the array back towards the start. Um, and if you have a negative step, then it means to count backwards. So um, if you put all of these rules together, then just a single colon on its own basically means everything. So some examples here. If we ask it for our array one, colon seven to two, what we're saying is we want to start at element one, we want to go up in every second element, and we want to stop um, before we get to element number seven. Um, so in other words, we want the second element going in every um, second up, up until, but not including the eighth element. And that returns the list one, three, and five. 
if we just say uh, seven colon, what we're saying is we want to go from the eighth, starting at the eighth element and go to the end because we haven't specified a stop. So that just returns seven, eight, nine. If we want to do uh, colon minus seven, what we mean is we want to go from the start, from zero, up to the seventh element from the end. Um, and so that up to, but not including the seventh element from, from the end. So that in fact gives us the first three elements, zero, one, and two. Um, if we say, uh, alternatively, if we say we want to start from minus three, we're saying we want to start from the third last element. In this case, we're going to the end. So in other words, we're getting the last three elements, which again is seven, eight, nine in this case. So with the slicing operators, it takes a little while to get your head around it, but once you do, it's very, very powerful. And you can get in and get exactly the, 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 the data you want, um, working either from the start or from the end or, or doing both. Uh, the final example then, if I just give it a simple colon, that just means everything. Um, that of course is not particularly useful when you're just talking about a one dimensional array because that would be the same thing as just saying my array. But as we'll see when we come to indexing two-dimensional arrays, that can be a, a more useful thing to go and do. So if we want to um, index a, um, uh, oh, sorry, before we go on to that, um, we can also index with a sequence of Boolean values. And this is a really useful trick um, in NumPy. So if I have a sequence of true or false values, which is the same length as my array is, then I can just uh, index with that sequence of true and false values, and it will build a, a result, which is just the items where the index was true. So to show you an example here, um, I'm gonna index my array with a sequence of true and false values. Um, so the first element, the first thing is true, then I have a bunches of falses, um, and then a true, and then some more falses, and then finally another true. And what that pulls out um, when I, index set uh, with that true or false um, uh, array, it returns just the elements where my, um, uh, uh, where I had a true value. So in other words, the first element, the fifth element, and the last element. Um, and the reason that's so useful is that, in, okay, in this example, I created this true or false array just manually, but I can actually use some kind of expression um, and so I can go and use this to filter values. So to show you an example of this, um, what I've done here first is I created an array, which is um, composed by saying, okay, take my array of numbers zero to nine, uh, find their modulus when you divide by two, and then compare that to zero. So uh, my array percent two equals equals zero is going to give me a set of true or falses depending on whether each element in my array is either even or not even. Um, and then when I index with that filter, uh, which I've called even, I pull out just the elements of my array which were even. So um, I can write some, some condition, um, as long as it will return an array of true or false values, I can then use that as a way of filtering the, the data I've got. Um, and that's a, a very, very powerful uh, way to um, select just some of the data from an array of values. Um, and you see the great thing with this is I don't have to do a loop, so I'm not looping over this. I could, for example, what I could do is try writing a for loop that would loop over my array value by value by value and say, um, if that element is divisible by two, if, if element percent two equals, equals zero, then uh, keep hold of that array element. But um, actually it turns out because of this process of vectorization that your computer can do, that is much, 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 much faster to um, do this than it is to go and build a for loop to run over everything. Okay, so um, moving on to indexing two-dimensional arrays. Um, so just like, um, lists, uh, um, just like indexing one-dimensional arrays, we can index two-dimensional arrays. Unlike lists, because arrays have multiple dimensions, we now need to be able to index both the rows and the columns, or the rows, columns, and pages, depending on how big our array is. Um, so the way we do this is we just index with a, 
the same rules as we had for one dimensional arrays, but we do it separately for each dimension and we separate out each dimension by commas. So let's create a, a two dimensional array um, of numbers. Um, so we create a kind of little number table like this. So 10 columns, five rows, um, and we start them to index it. So the first thing is that if you don't specify enough indices for the, for the array, so in this case, if I only specify one index, it will index the first dimension, which is always going to be the rows. So in this case, my array square brackets one um, is going to pull out the second row. And that's equivalent to asking for my array one comma and then colon. So here I'm using that colon, the slicing method that I talked about before, the one dimension of the array, the single colon means everything. Um, so one comma colon means the same thing as the second row, all the possible columns. And that's in fact going to be the same thing as my array, just first row. Um, if I specify two numbers, then I get uh, just a single element. So in this case, um, I'm going for the third row, the fifth column by specifying two and four. Again, remember we index from zero. Um, and I can do slices. Um, so in this example, I'm asking it for every second row. So colon, colon two means starting from zero, going to the end in steps of two. And uh, that's on the first dimension, which is the rows. And then colon, colon three, meaning from the first column to the last column in steps of three. And so that pulls out, um, uh, in this case, the, the uh, little array you see is there. And it returns it as a little, um, uh, in this case, four by three array. Um, if I want to pull out um, just one column, so with when I want to specify one row, I could just specify square brackets, the row number. And you, just above there, you see I said that's the same thing as specifying one comma colon, meaning first, second row and all the columns. Um, if I want to specify a column, then I need to tell NumPy when I'm indexing it that I want all the rows. And so I do colon, comma, so that's all the rows, and then one, meaning just the second column. Uh, and again, you can see that's the, the one I pulled out. Um, okay, so here I've just pulled out the third row. Um, I've not listed all the columns, so I've got um, all of the um, all the columns. Now, one thing to note here is that's pulled out things that, that's pulled out as, as a one-dimensional array, and because arrays are always row major, it actually turns it into a, a column. Um, so, in this case, ten rows, one column long. Even though in the original array that was a row. Um, and you can also do the indexing with uh, Boolean values. So you can index with uh, an array of Boolean values as long as it is the same shape as the array you're trying to index. So in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a two-dimensional array, which is simply all the multiples of four. Um, uh, and so you see that comes out as then uh, true, well, zero, it's sort of a multiple of four, false, 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 true, false, 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 true, and so on, all the way through the whole of that array. And if I then use that to index the, um, the original array, what I get is just a list of all of the multiples of four. And again, the thing to notice here is it's converted that to a one-dimensional array because um, it can't construct a two-dimensional array um, out of the patterns of trues and falses I'm giving it. So it's going to have to be a one-dimensional array. But it is all the multiples of four that I've pulled out. Um, so when you're indexing with the true and the false values, NumPy can't know in advance um, what, how those elements are actually arranged in your array. So it's got to just return it as a one-dimensional list. 